Donald Trump is enraged at the way the Manhattan criminal trial against him is going. He's also enraged that no supporters are showing up to protest on his behalf. He kept on making posts encouraging protesters to show up to try to support him when he enters or leaves the courthouse. Nobody is showing up. And after day six of the criminal trial for Donald Trump's falsification of business records to interfere with the 2016 election, when his former colleague David Pecker, who ran the National Enquirer, testified against Donald Trump and it was devastating and Donald Trump left and there were none of his supporters out there. He was in such a fit, in such a rage that he started posting that people were there but they were just prevented from protesting. Watch what he just posted. Let's take a look at it. And then I want to show you that we had uh, our co-host at Legal AF, Michael Popak, who lives in New York. He went to the courthouse to just show that nobody was there. If protesters wanted to be there, they could be there, but that no one was there during the hours while court was in session or even after. Take a look at what Donald Trump posted. And he calls Maggie Haberman, a reporter at the New York Times, who's been writing about how Donald Trump has been falling asleep and his just very bizarre a behavior in the courtroom. Donald Trump calls her Maggot Hagerman. That's what he refers to her as because Donald Trump is a petulant third grader. No offense to petulant third graders, but this is what Donald Trump writes. He goes, thousands of people were turned away from the courthouse in lower Manhattan by steel stanchions and police, literally blocks from the tiny side door where I enter and leave. It is an armed camp to keep people away. Maggot Hagerman of the failing New York Times falsely reported that I was disappointed with the crowds. No, I'm disappointed with Maggot and her lack of writing skill and that some of these many police aren't being sent to Columbia and NYU to keep the schools open and the students safe. The legal scholars call the case a scam that should never have been brought. I call it election interference and a personal hit job by a conflicted and corrupt judge who shouldn't be allowed to preside over this political hoax. New York justice is being reduced to ashes and the world is breathlessly watching. Hopefully appellate courts can save it and all the companies that are fleeing to other jurisdictions, they can no longer take a chance on New York justice. Now, every single thing that Donald Trump says is false. And what was interesting is when there was a contempt hearing earlier in the day on Tuesday and Donald Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, was confronted with the facts like the fact that Donald Trump was manipulating statements that were made by people in the media and Trump was giving them quotes that they never even said to attack witnesses. Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, had to admit that they were lying during this contempt hearing. And then Todd Blanche said, look, judge, we're doing our best to try to comply. Donald Trump is trying to follow what your honor is saying. It's just so very hard to which Justice Mershon said, Mr. Blanche, you are absolutely losing all of your credibility with this court. And just to show you as well what Donald Trump posted earlier in the week to try to encourage people to protest on his behalf, he wrote the following, why are Palestinian protesters and even rioters allowed to roam the city, scream, shout, sit, block traffic, enter buildings, not get permits and basically do whatever they want. And yet people who truly love our country and want to make America great again are not allowed to peacefully protest it and are rudely and systematically shut down and ushered off to far away holding areas. And then he says, um, go out and peacefully protest rally behind MAGA, save our country. The only thing you have to fear is fear itself, quoting Democrat FDR, but I don't think Donald Trump uh, knows that. But again, he just 
furthers this lie that people want to protest on Donald Trump's behalf. Nobody was there, or I stand corrected. There was one person there who was out there supporting Donald Trump, and I mean that, just one person. And we sent uh, Michael Popak, host of Legal AF, to go to the courthouse and evaluate for himself and to show us what the courthouse looks like, what the surrounding and adjacent area looks like. And Michael Popak once again exposed that everything that Donald Trump and MAGA is saying is absolute lies. Play this clip. Michael Popak reporting from the courthouse. I wanted to spell all the rumors really generated by Donald Trump that his supporters are somehow being blocked and banned from coming down here. The reason there are no supporters, I'm gonna show you the video feed coming up in a second, is because they don't wanna come down and support them. There is no barriers, there's no barricades. True, you can't just walk down Center Street. Um, that's been blocked off, but the parallel street to Center Street, Lafayette, is fully open and leads you right to the courthouse. Let's test this theory that Donald Trump has that all of his supporters would be here if it only was for the fact that there wasn't so many blockades. All right, none of that is true. Here is an entirely open park. I got to it through Lafayette, right across from the New York Family Courthouse. This is the total number of people, both red and blue, <laughs> that are interested in this trial, right? We are directly across from the courthouse. As you can see, a completely empty park. There you have it by Michael Popeye. Full stop, it is so important to have a good memory. Losing your keys, forgetting something at work, it sucks. Our sponsor, Neurohacker, combines 28 of the most research-backed nootropic ingredients on Earth into the ultimate brain fuel formula, quality of mind. And it's been changing people's lives for years now. The formula is non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, and the ingredients are meant to complement one another, factoring in each ingredient's effect on supporting mental clarity. It's also backed by a 100-day money-back guarantee, so you have almost three months to try Quality of Mind at no financial risk and decide for yourself. Since taking Quality of Mind, I've been more focused on tasks, have a better memory, and have greatly increased my motivation and discipline to just get things done. See what the best brain fuel formula on earth can do for your mindset. Go to neurohacker.com slash Midas for up to $100 off quality of mind. And as a listener of the Midas Touch podcast, use code Midas at checkout for an additional 15% off any purchase. That's neurohacker.com slash Midas and use code Midas for an additional 15% off to experience life-changing mental performance from Qualia Mind. And can we reflect just for a minute that Donald Trump is such a petulant child, no offense to petulant child, that he's calling a serious writer for the New York Times. You may or may not like Maggie Haberman's writing, but she does not deserve to be called Maggot Hagerman. And it's like, what are you even doing? Like, how odd, how pathetic can you be, Donald Trump, to um, say things like that? Also, this is from Von Hilliard, a reporter out there, just confirming another data point of Michael Popak's coverage as well. And as we said here on the Midas Touch Network, it's driving Trump absolutely insane that he has almost no supporters heeding his call to protest at the courts. He is just there by himself, no fans, no family, all alone. And that's right, no Melania, no Don Jr., no Eric, no Ivanka, no Baron. None of his families, none of his family members are there. Here's the video from Von Hilliard, and Von says, Trump just claimed that the police have shut down the streets around the courthouse for blocks and that his protesters can't be here. Just not true. There is one pro-Trump person here in the main street along the courthouse is open to traffic. Let's play this clip. <laughs> Now, one of the things that Donald Trump is doing in the courtroom while uh, the witness testifies, we had David Pecker testify on Tuesday about the catch and kill scheme. Now, David Pecker was very close to Donald Trump. He testified that he had a meeting with Donald Trump. They came up with a plan together to interfere with the 2016 election, how Pecker was going to catch 
bad stories that could harm Donald Trump's campaign and pecker against his own interest would kill those stories and stop those stories by buying off the stories and buying off the people who had bad stories against Donald Trump from ever telling those stories. And Pecker said, we did this to influence the 2016 election. Pecker admitted to the plan and scheme. So while that's going on, and as Donald Trump is like falling asleep in court, and as we reported, other things are going on in that courtroom as well, apparently. Olivia Newsy, reporter, described Donald Trump as looking like a like a trout with his mouth open, and it's just so strange. His team's trying to control him by creating picture books for him. And we talked about this last week, but they're giving him uh, f articles that they think Donald Trump will find flattering from right-wing press like Fox and Newsmax and OAN and all and the Steve Bannon network and all of the, the Mike Lindell network, all this right-wing just total Kim Jong-un style propaganda. Trump pays somebody, she's on his payroll, Natalie Harp, $105,000 to give Donald Trump uh, positive news coverage about him from right-wing media. And then Trump sits there and just goes through all of uh, these positive articles and he takes a Sharpie and he crosses out portions of the articles that he does not like. Um, that are already right-wing propaganda, and then they remove it, and then they post on his social media like manipulated articles. So this was Donald Trump leaving the courthouse. Just take a look at him as he complains that he can't read the printouts of all of these articles that he pays somebody to print out for him. How embarrassing. Play this clip. And even having to do with articles, somebody writes an article, if I read every one of these articles incomplete, I read some of them and I'll look at headlines, all good headlines, and the case is a sham, but I can't read the whole thing. I'd be reading, this is like reading a novel. So I put an article in and then somebody's name is mentioned somewhere deep in the article and I end up in violation of the gag order. Uh, I think it's a disgrace, it's totally unconstitutional. I don't believe it's never, not to this extent, ever happened before. Donald Trump also had time on Tuesday to make a video of himself. Here he is, uh, Ron Filipkowski got this photo of Donald Trump at Trump Tower shooting this propaganda video. And then we saw what the video was that was released later in the day. So as all of this is going on, as Donald Trump is whining that people aren't protesting for him, or he claims there are thousands of people, you just can't see him. And that gets debunked as you have Donald Trump getting these articles printed for him that are these flattering articles and he's paying someone six figures to print flattering articles for him. He's recording these propaganda videos where he is bragging. And this is what he says. He goes, we terminated Roe v. Wade. It's working out really well for people and they're very happy. This is the video that Donald Trump was making while all of this was going on as well. Um, and while the court proceed before the court proceedings took place. Watch this, play the clip. And we were able to do that when we terminated Roe v. Wade. Now, when the when you look at it and you look at what's happening all over the country now, states are voting. Ohio just voted. All different, by the way. It's tailor made and it's really working out well for for people. And they're very, very happy. Every legal scholar felt and felt for a long time, for 53 years they've been trying to do it. Oh, and by the way, as we think about the testimony from David Pecker from the National Enquirer, think about the stories they planted about Ted Cruz, which Pecker talks about, that they would just come up with these lies about Trump's political opponents, and they would just make them up and, and publish them. So like Ted Cruz's five secret mistresses, Ted Cruz's name is mentioned in Madam's Black Book. It goes on to say how Heidi Cruz is betrayed by her cheating husband. Ted Cruz's father linked to JFK assassination. Uh, hooker, teacher, and co-workers. Five romps that will destroy Ted Cruz. And this was part of the plan that they would get out bad stories and hit pieces on Trump's enemies. 
and then they would cover up when Trump was actually engaged in the conduct that they were accusing Trump's political opponents of, then Trump would have the National Enquirer buy the stories and not allow actual stories to be published. And then Trump falsified the business records um, to try to avoid showing the payments that were made when ultimately uh, the publisher, when National Enquirer stopped doing it, Trump had to do it on his own and then um, he falsified the business records to try to conceal what he was doing here. Also, just think about it from the perspective of Ted Cruz. Like, how weak can you possibly be that you support somebody who engaged in this behavior to you? Folks, I know I presented a lot of data right there, but I want you to be fully informed about what is going on. And as I said, to me, this is not a political issue. This is just the facts. I look at these facts, I look at Donald Trump's behavior, and I think that this is absolutely disqualifying, disturbing, strange, dangerous, you name it. But you tell me what you think in the comments below. We'll keep reporting here every step of the way on the Midas Touch Network. We're in this together. We'll, we'll walk you through each step of the way of this trial, okay? Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. Thank you so much for watching.